My name is Jason. And my name is David. And this is a comic strip AP of Dungeon World featuring the story of Domenico Castafiel. And when we last saw Domenico, he was being ushered into the private salon of a Lady Francesa Voltaire. Um, Lady Francesa greeted him in a state of undress. Uh, she is just barely uh, covered by a little bit of fabric and some strategically placed black jewelry. And as you step into the room, Domenico, this is a room you've been in before, right? I mean, you've been in her private salon, I imagine, many, many times. I've been here to help her maintain her her beauty and to hear her concerns and, you know, just other general just spending time here. She, she does a lot of her divination in here, especially the real magic divination, not just the artificial divination. Are you friends? It's an amicable employer-employee relationship. I keep, I try and keep that that distance because I know what she gets up to with all of her lovers and how she just kind of turns them and burns them, and I, and I don't want to be that. So the Castafiels are a very old family, and they have a lot of money. And yet, I think Lady Francesa is a little bit more ostentatious about her wealth, right? Maybe it's something even the Castafiels, like your sisters or or your brothers, would you know kind of look down upon, like, oh, how how gauche or whatever, right? What do you see in the room that's a reminder of just how sort of decadent Lady Francesa is? Uh, everything is w- wood paneled with gold inlays and gems gems on the banisters to to do little just they're 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 not subtle they're very obvious and ostentatious and you can't help but notice them because the lights shine on them and that's not how castifiels do it we're much more quality you can tell it's nice because it's subtle and it, it it would last forever not because it's so ostentatious so like she's more like it's more like gilded it's like it's like costume jewelry versus real jewelry or something right it's like wearing a diamond necklace that has 50 diamonds and uh, and gold inlays and then rubies to, to, to show off the diamonds versus wearing a simple silver chain with a single beautiful gem. That's not a bad analogy. There is a smell that pervades all of Lady Francesa's spaces. You're familiar with it. It's a little bit like lemons and roses, but... There's something else, too, just underneath it. And you start to realize a bit of what that might be as she steps forward. Because as she steps forward, you hear a sort of squishing sound beneath her feet. And you see little tendrils of blood dripping off her heels and soles as she steps toward you. And you realize now that 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 smell was blood. What do you do? When I realize, and and I, I can kind of taste and smell the, the that coppery, that coppery flavor of blood in the air, I, my eyes get kind of wide, and I'm like, Lady Francesa, what has happened here? Is everything okay? I have probed deeply this night, Domenico. I have walked into the darkest heart of the forest of our collective memory, and then she exhales. <sighs> And I stumbled into a gathering of ancient beings who have walked in these lands long before us during the beginning of all things. And I opened myself wide to them and I allowed them to enter me, to thrust deeply into my consciousness, to possess me completely to allow them to do with me whatever they in their divine wisdom deemed fit. So Lady Francesa has a certain theatrical way about her, right? We've established that already. And yet this is a strange situation. She's walking in a pool of blood. What do you do right now? Are you, are you, uh, how are you treating her? What are you doing? I just, you just kind of standing there in shock or what? No, I, I grimace and I kind of, 
step step on my toes into the room because I don't want to just ruin my shoes in this blood. Uh, but I'm trying to like guide her towards the bed to make sure she's okay. Like it's I can't tell if it's her blood or if she was doing some really really big ritual in here. Um, and I'm like asking her about it. Like what have, what did you do? How have you have you how have you caused all this blood to be here? Uh, roll to certain realities. All right. I got a 10, so that's three questions. Uh, what happened to you recently? If you take her and sit her down on a, let's say there's like a, a silk couch, right? Uh, a couch upholstered in like sort of a pinkish red silk. If you set her down, you will glance just over the back of the couch and notice that there is a body behind it. It's been split open and the entrails are hanging out and big thick pool of blood that's soaked into the carpet. What do you do? I put my hand over my mouth and kind of stifle a, an intake of breath and <laughs> Lady Francesa, what what have you done to this man? I had to go very, very, very deeply this night. Domenico, I had so many questions to ask these ancient beings. And when they were done ravaging my body, they whispered the truth to me. They whispered the answer I have been seeking. There is another who awaits me. And she, as she says that, she kind of, she begins to sort of like, like she's getting a little dizzy, a little faint, and she kind of leans back on the couch and closes her eyes. And uh, what are you doing? Do you want to have? You have another question you want to ask her? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, what here is not what it appears to be. As she lays back, you can see a little more clearly. In I think she has like some candles, like in a chandelier above, right? A little more clearly in the light, you can see that her normally very smooth and flawless body. She's got like these thick black veins or like this thick black palsy of some sort is like working its way up, uh, up her legs and her torso. Uh, she's, she's sick. There's something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I go to her and I'm like checking for vital signs to see if she's okay. And then I'll ask my third question. Just what's about to happen. She looks at you. And she smiles, and she says, It's good to know you care, Domenico. Uh, Lady Francesa, this is completely unnatural. What is... I don't know what, what has happened, but something has gone wrong. The one who awaits me, the one they whispered of, she is one to whom I have owed a debt for many, many years. And she will have her payment, I'm afraid. And there is nothing that you and your talents can do to help me this time. Uh, this poison, this darkness, this death, whatever it is that has hold of me, it is slowed by the work that you have done for me and the work that your predecessors have done for me over the years. Uh, but death has come to claim me, and I don't know if I can stop it this time. There may yet be a way. And she leans back, and she kind of sort of passes out, I guess, falls asleep. And you are distinctly aware of a wetness forming around your ankles. And you're reminded of that body behind the couch. And what do you do? Uh, I go to the door and um, see if the major domo is anywhere around. He's right there as soon as you open the door. He's staring at you. What's his name? Magnus. Magnus. Your lady has gotten up to some unusual uh, activities. I understand what it is, Lord Castafiel, and I know that you must help her. 
and you understand that you must get this mess cleaned up in here immediately. Yes. But first, I'm going to take you to the ladies' library so you can begin your research. Very well. Uh, but first, I need your shoes. Hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, please consider supporting the Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet.